In her opening statement, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford told the committee she believed it was her civic duty to tell them what she said happened while she and Brett Kavanaugh were in high school. Ford says in the summer of 1982, while at a gathering, she was pushed into a bedroom. She says Kavanaugh and Mark Judge came into the room, locking the door. Ford says Kavanaugh groped her and tried to take off her clothes. I believed he was going to rape me. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. She says this terrified her the most. I thought that Brett was accidentally going to kill me. Both Brett and Mark were drunkenly laughing during the attack. Ford says she was able to escape. She went on to say she never told anyone the details until a couple's counseling session in 2012. Ford says she doesn't remember all the specifics, like the date or place of the alleged assault. Some Republicans have speculated it's a case of mistaken identity. With what degree of certainty do you believe Brett Kavanaugh assaulted you? 100 percent. 100 percent. The Republican side chose to hire Arizona sex crimes prosecutor Rachel Mitchell to question both Ford and Kavanaugh. In his opening statements, Brett Kavanaugh attempted to clear his name. I've never sexually assaulted anyone, not in high school, not in college, not ever. He then called it a last minute smear. This whole two week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit. Kavanaugh said he didn't question that Ford may have been sexually assaulted, but said it wasn't him. We mean, we mean no ill will. Ford first contacted her congressional representative when Kavanaugh made the shortlist. Several Republican leaders say they should have known about this sooner. Democrats continue calling for a full FBI investigation. She said she could better recall the time period uh, if she knew when Mark Judge worked at the Safeway and he's hiding out at a beach house in Delaware and she's simply trying to get that information and the FBI uh, could open that up at either the request of the president or the Republican senators asking the president to open it up. Things got heated during Kavanaugh's hearing. This is not a job interview. Yeah. This is hell. This, this, this is going to destroy the ability of good people to come forward because of this crap. It was an unbelievable day. And we want to take some time to exhale and ask a third voice to come in and talk about this. Professor Mark Osler from the University of St. Thomas. You have a background in law. You have a background with Judge Kavanaugh. That's right. And you're here today to talk about the hearings and sort of what you saw and a man that you knew in college, and it's the first thing I want to ask you, as a former prosecutor in the Detroit area, a federal prosecutor, what was your take of the whole hearing and the hearing design today? It was a remarkable day. I think this is one of those 30-year days that 30 years from now we'll be talking about, like the Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas hearings, because it hits so much at, at, at the fault lines in our society. Huh. In terms of the testimony, both of them were remarkable in different ways. How so? You know, Dr. Ford, I would agree, Dr. Ford was so different than Judge Kavanaugh, both emotional, but different kinds of emotion. What did you see there? Well, starting with Dr. Ford, sure. um, as a prosecutor, that's the kind of witness that you would hope for. She gave short answers. Very often she was just leaning into the microphone and saying, correct. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you want a witness to do, is to, to, to yes and no questions, give that kind of answer. That's what police officers do. They're so well trained and experienced. Okay. The other thing that she did that I found uh, really added to her credibility was that she would often point to corroborative evidence that's out there. Okay. For example, you could go find Mark Judge's work schedule at the Safeway, mm -hmm. and that'll tell us you know, when this happened and when I saw him. Um, and so in terms of the, what she did, I thought she was a very strong witness, and, and I did find her credible, as I, and I was moved by her testimony. How about the judge? Judge Kavanaugh. Um, was, uh, you know, his testimony at times seemed like it was in all caps. Mm. And that was, a, th that was a curious take. That is not something that usually you would advise a witness to do. The, the expression of anger that came in again and again and again is, I think, going to be problematic for a lot of people when what's being discussed is the sexual assault of a 15-year-old girl. Okay. But could it be justified that anger is affirming your honesty and affirming that you don't agree with what's being said? Yes, but the problem was that he maintained that stance of anger even when the questions were about things like timing of the hearing or should there be an FBI investigation. So it's one, th I, I think, you know, if you're falsely accused, certainly there's a point for that, that righteous anger to come forward. Um, but 
to have it at the points that weren't really about that right. probably undermines the power of that anger. Yeah, I don't want to talk. Oh, go ahead. No, you mentioned the FBI investigation. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, seriously. I mean, the FBI was brought up a lot. Yeah. And um, Judge Kavanaugh, obviously somebody want, who, who respects due process. I mean, he's a judge. Right. But when somebody asked him, will you have an FBI investigation? You could say it right now. And he kind of refused to say that. Was that good or bad or indifferent that was bad. or what? <laughs> that was bad. And, and particularly the silence in response to uh, Dick Durbin, Senator Durbin's question uh, that he went after that repeatedly. And there was this period where it was just clear that he wasn't going to answer that question. But is it based on evidence or based on something else? I mean, if, if an FBI investigation were to happen, it could take time, Senate could change. Maybe he's thinking that too, or is he purely thinking evidence? I, I don't know. I uh, mean, the, the fact is that, that one would expect that if, if you're innocent of claims, you would want an investigation. You want someone to go out there and corroborate what you say and to uh, disprove what the other person is saying, especially when there's so many uh, vague things floating around. You'd think that that's what the FBI is good at. They go and talk to people that are on the outer circle or were witnesses to things, um, parents, family members, and it can be quite telling. Mm. A lot of, a name that came up many times, I bet you also out on social media or heard it mentioned is Mark Judge. Mark Judge is the person that Dr. Ford is saying was in that bedroom that night that would be the only witness to the sexual assault that she is claiming happened. We aren't, we aren't hearing from Mark Judge. Should we? Yes, I, I think absolutely. That it would have made a big difference if there had been a third, a fourth, a fifth witness to testify as well about these things. And, and part of what we lost today, and this is going to come out, I think, in the subtext of the discussions going forward, is that without uh, the FBI investigation, without other witnesses, we didn't have points of corroboration to hold up against right. the testimony today. Right. And that means it puts much more focus on demeanor, that instead of saying, well, that's consistent with this other thing, people are gonna talk about he seemed to be lying or she seemed to be lying, uh, just from a gut. And I want to get to this question because it's important and it's the one that you all wanted us to ask, Professor Osler. You went to Yale. You went to Yale with Judge Kavanaugh. You had beers with Judge Kavanaugh. Did you see the same guy today that you knew back then and what did you know about him then? Well, I'll start with the second question. I went to law school. Uh, he went to Yale for both college and law school and I just went to law school with him. Um, you know, he was, he was, a, there was a smart group of people. Uh, you know, he was a he was a good guy. I never saw anything like the behavior that's alleged or heard about anything like the behavior that's alleged. I will say though, that the person I saw on television today was very different than the person that not only I knew then, but who, whose reputation precedes him as being a judge with a, with a good demeanor on the bench. Um, you know, the exchange he had with Senator Klobuchar, that's not the kind of demeanor that we look for from judges. So it was different, markedly yes. different from what you recall? Yes, yeah, the, the, um, the kind of, uh, you know, it, it's odd because part of what he was brought in to talk about was allegations that he was belligerent when he was drunk as a young man. Um, you know, the fact is we kind of saw his belligerence and for a lot of people mm. that's gonna be impeaching. But aren't you, aren't you seeing a man cornered with his family being drugged through the mud as well? I mean, that would be a natural response to such allegations? Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, although I think that as someone who, you know, is, a, is smart and analytical, yeah. that the, the better route to clear your name would be to invite the investigation, to have, to have skilled agents go and disprove these claims. Real quick, but we have about a minute left. Um, how would you alter the hearing process to seek truth better besides what we saw today? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, these things should have come up before the first set of hearings. Now, you know, it, 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 that was muddled a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, clearly it was Dr. Ford who delayed things because she didn't want it to be publicly identified with her. Right. But um, allowing more time, not having uh, the rush, and having less partisanship. You know, it could be that having the questions asked by a third party, as mm -hmm. the Republicans did today, that might be something to think about in the future more broadly so that questions are asked instead of speeches being given oh, by the senators. Very good point. Well, we thank you for your time today and coming on our show tonight. We really appreciate it and your input. I appreciate you, the chance. Thanks.